world, welcome to Salesforce Training. Today we're talking about SOQL, SSL, and DML. Starting with our little friend, DML. DML stands for Data Manipulation Language. DML operations are the ones that include all of those beautiful keywords. Insert, update, upsert, delete, undelete, and merge. You might see them written like this, or like this. The advantage of writing them like this is that it can also take in what we call the all or none parameter. This parameter is a Boolean value, and if it's true, we're basically saying, we are going all in, all of us, right now, right here, or none of us are going in at all. It's all or nothing. If it's false, we're saying, well, those who should go, they should probably go, but if some of us can't go, you know, it's not a big deal. We're all gonna be okay. Just let those who can go, and those of us who can't, you know, we're just gonna stay behind and chill. It's fine, it's fine. The thing to know here is that DML is default aggressive. This means that the default value for this all or none is true, even if it's not specified. The only way we can actually make it false is to actually put in that false Boolean value. So if we do decide to allow partial success and set our Boolean value to false, then how do we actually check what's been successful and what hasn't? Introducing our save result objects. If we've used an insert or update action, then our resulting object is going to be database.saveResult. If we've used the upsert DML command, then our return value is going to be database.upsertResult. And if we use delete, then our return value is going to be database.deleteResult. Each of these will return a list, and you can check if they have been successful or not by using the methods is success, and if there's been any errors, use get errors. SOSL. SOSL stands for Salesforce Object Search Language and is used to perform text searches in multiple different objects. This means it can do things like search the text fields, name, email, phone across multiple standard and custom objects. It will always return a list of a list of S objects and it's best used when you're not exactly sure which particular object the data resides in. In this example, we're looking for John Smith in the name fields of any lead objects. This will return the IDs of any leads that have the name Joe Smith. We're doing exactly the same thing here, but instead of just returning the ID, we're also returning the name and the phone fields. Building on our last query, we're looking for Joe Smith in the name fields of all leads and we're returning the name and the phone and only leads that were created in the current fiscal quarter. Now, if our spelling isn't so sharp, we can use the OR statement to look for John Smith spelled like this or this. Here, we're also returning a lead or a contact. But if there was, say, an opportunity that was called Joe Smith, with either of those spellings, it would not be returned. We also have wildcards that we can use, which means that we're just searching for this plus anything extra. Or say we were looking for all Joe Smiths, all Joe Smarts, all Joe Smithies. This would be a great query to use. SOQL. SOQL stands for Salesforce Object Query Language. And it's a really powerful way to search Salesforce for any sort of data that you're after. SOQL is similar to the popular search query language SQL, but it's suited specifically for Salesforce objects. SOQL uses a select statement and then any filling parameters to narrow down the query to what you're after. For example, this query here is returning the ID and the name field of any records in an account that have the name Sandy. Just like SOSL, we have a wildcard in SOQL, but instead of it being a little asterisk in here, it's our percentage sign. The return value of an SOQL is always going to be a list of S objects. There are two ways that we can write SOQL queries, inline and dynamic. The advantage of dynamic SOQL is that it's easier to update at runtime and more flexible. For example, you could always get some input from a user and then put that in your dynamic SOQL query. Just be aware of the security implications here and watch our video on that for some more information. One disadvantage of dynamic SOQL is that it does pose a little bit of a security risk with SOQL injections. A great way to overcome that is to use the escape single quotes method. There you have it guys, that's it for SOQL, SOSL and DML. I really hope that you guys got something out of that. Let me know in the comments below. Feel free to check out our website for some more awesome resources and blog posts. Other than that, I'll see you guys next time.